Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to another episode of Jules and the Blood TV. It's Sunday evening, which of course means it's match day review showtime. And what a match to review this week. I'm, of course, joined once again by my co-host Reese from German Jules. And pleased to say that to give us a perspective from Morecambe is Joel Shooter. He is, of course, a Shrimps fan and is also podcast producer for the Shrimps Trust. So please give him a follow. Does some great stuff in the Morecambe community. Um... Yeah, bear with me, gents. I'm sure everyone has seen on social media of my um, coaching escapades <laughs> late last night on somewhere on the M6. So I'm doing this on minimal sleep and just keep thinking three points. Uh, we'll go back to two o'clock to start with, as usual. And that was when the team news came out. And me and Joel had a chat before the game and the Shrimps had made a couple of changes. So it was Mayor in goal, a back four of Senior Stokes, Badeau and Disco Dave to Tonda. Protecting in front was to uh, Taylor and Cambeni. And it was an attacking trio of Brown, Adams and Slew, accompanying lone front men Garner for the Jills. Unchanged from last Saturday's one-all draw at home to Grimsby Town. So it was Glenn Morris in goal, a back four from right to left of Hutton, Amar, Oakey and Clark. Dieng and McKenzie in the middle of the park with Mahoney, Lapsley and Johnny Williams. Supporting lone striker Ollie Hawkins. Joel, what I always do is I write down a paragraph just to try and sum up the game before we go and have a look at the timeline of the two periods. And I've put an open and entertaining encounter with both sides having a real go. Chances are plenty with the result ultimately decided by poor goalkeeping. Yeah, not unreasonable. I thought first half, probably relatively even. I thought we looked quite dangerous in transition. Uh, obviously, that's where the goals come from. Charlie Brown's kind of managed to poke the ball away on that on, on that right flank and on our right flank and kind of get away and put Slew through. He's done really well to keep his cool and finish like that. It felt like there was maybe probably a bit maybe a bit of a plan to jump on, on Williams and the left back down that side. It maybe felt like uh, mm -hmm. just the way that C Senior is so quick at right back, the way he sprung out and the way Charlie Brown really went in quite hard there. It felt like that might have been deliberate as well. So we did we've done well to go ahead there. I had a couple of I had a few more like openings on the break I'd say throughout the rest of the half. Uh, Gilliam or big threat from crosses and it's something we struggled with in recent weeks and obviously that's where the equaliser's come from I think maybe Mayor could have been a bit firmer with the hand he's managed to he, he, he always he's palmed it and it's gone straight to Hawkins but maybe he could have been a bit like firmer with that palm away from goal send it a bit you know, send it a few more yards away but it's what it is second half gotta say I thought I thought we bossed it completely I thought we just took it up a gear. Having Jake Taylor, I think I mentioned pretty much Jake Taylor being back in the side of midfield. I thought he 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 can run games at this level, and I thought he did. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Uh, created lots of chances, deserved the goal. Rode the bit of pressure that Gillian were inevitably going to have after we scored. Generally, kind of looking pretty even. Then yeah, bit of a bit of a mare in net really, and looks like that's right. It's taking a bit taking a bit on the wind, bit of the sun as well, and then kind of from there. Feels like we've maybe started to panic a little bit, and then yeah, Mayor, I'm guessing that that first air is playing on his mind, and he's got the rush of clearance and spooned it straight in somebody's path. And obviously they've they've gone through and put it away by a deflection. So it's very frustrating, really. Uh, yeah, just frustrating to have played so well. But I think long term thinking, look, I didn't really expect Morgan to be in the position at the start of the season. I'll take it. We're probably not going to make the playoffs. Uh, but there's some really good football we played. There are things that need iron and out. Hopefully, with the summer and the pre season, you know, new bit of recruitment that'll that'll help. But yeah, tough one to take, but is what it is. Yeah, it must be frustrating from a home point of view, having seen yourselves go in front twice. And, and we'll get on to, to the finer points of everything. But Reese, uh, Joel said he thought that Morecambe bossed it second half. I thought it was a half or two halves. I thought up until the goal, Morecambe had the better chances, and Glenn Morris was called into action a couple of times. and we were a little bit open, which which we said we was going to be, because we've got to take more chances now if we want to win enough games to try and get into that top seven. But I thought from the equaliser, I thought that Jules were, were well on top the last sort of 20 minutes and, and created plenty of chances. Um, but yeah, I just thought the first half was, we started really well, didn't we? I think I think we had the ball in the back of the net after about five minutes. Um, it is offside. I mean, the away end have gone up, but quickly sat, sat back down and the linesman's flag was up straight away. And I think you can see Ollie Hawkins is, is stood on the goal line and then tries to sort of step back into play to, to head it into an empty net. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it sort of set the tone, didn't it? The open start from both teams to what was 
ultimately how the game absolutely played out. And it, we've used the phrase before and probably not enough from a Gillian perspective, but it felt very much like a basketball game. It was two honest teams having a real go and trying to... There was no inkling of either side settling for a point at any stage, I didn't feel. No, and a credit to Clements, I think, because he could have changed it away from home, put five at the back and have a different approach entirely and be in a very closed game. But he started with his guns from the, you know, for the second half we had at Grimsby last week, you know, why would you not want to bolster that or at least sustain that kind of approach moving into an away game and try and get on the front foot? So to have that approach was, it was clear the first five or six minutes that, yeah, this is, we're trying to continue on the second half uh, ascendancy we had against Grimsby. And, and uh, yeah, I, I also want to add to just sort of as an extra extension to your kind of summary, I don't think it was the greatest advert for League Two defending, really, <laughs> from, from both sides, <laughs> which is probably why there were five goals scored in the game, possibly could have been more. But, um, but, you're, but yeah, you're right, Matt. And I think the first, um, the first sort of five minutes, we were, we were on top. We got the first corner of the of the match at that six minutes in. Yeah, from it, we did put the ball in the back of the net. But, you know, Ollie Hawkins was pretty much with the Morecambe fans, I think, for a while before he came on the pitch. <laughs> and not that in the top corner, he's very far offside, actually. Yeah, there was no complaints, was there, which generally gives you an idea. No one ran to the linesman or the man in the middle. Um, and then, unfortunately, which is very typical, Giles, we went and conceded a really soft opener because it's such a poor ball from Shadow I mean, we've seen him plenty of times drive out from the heart of defence into midfield, especially when we were playing with a back three because he gets that protection behind him. But we need him to be brave and we need him to keep doing it because Maxima isn't going to do that. He's not that type of centre-half, which is fine. So they're a good blend in that sense. But it's a simple five-yard pass to Max Clark that he fails to make. From there, Charlie Brown's away because he's got the momentum. He's running. Clark's having to try and turn back on his heels and get back to him. Everyone gets sucked across to that left-hand side. And, and what Jordan Slew does really well, Joel, is he just holds his position wider on the left. The, the pass is perfect. The finish is perfect. It, it's just a really good finish. You can't take anything away from Slew or Brown for the pass and the goal. But I'm guessing from a, a fan of a club who's been defensively all over the show at the moment, he was probably thinking, nice, it's nice to be on the other side of it. Yeah, no, it's, it's one of those ones where, look, it's a sloppy pass, but I think Charlie Brown, you got you got to anticipate these things, and he's done mm. well to do that. And yeah, it, it did feel like there was a, a maybe it's a bit of bias because of where I was on the pitch. Obviously, I'm I'm in the main stand, so that's the side I'm watching most of the most kind of intense. Oh, so you were the same side as myself? Yeah, yeah so I think okay. I don't know if maybe that I, I felt like Joel Senior and Charlie Brown were really, really on the toes of uh, Williams and the left back and everybody. So, uh. Yeah, so maybe maybe there was a bit of that in the play for, but yeah, I think John Slew, he's he's you know quite clearly a confidence player and his confidence is quite high at the minute because he really kept his cool and fair play to him as well. As soon as we've won the ball back, he's he's headed up the pitch like he's like you say he's, he's maintained that wide position. He's seen what the space is, and you know I've I've looked you know watched about the goal. He's he's left his he's left the right back in the dust to be fair, and yeah, he got a credit like the the endeavour to get up the pitch that quickly, and then you know once he ran that far for at that pace it's it's quite hard to you know your legs are a bit heavy and uh it's quite hard not to just well it as hard as you can and send it into the stands but he's kept his cool finished at the bottom corner and yeah fair play to him it's a good goal and uh you take the lead and that's the thing uh, lead to people do things wrong semi-frequently i <laughs> think you've got to try and make the most when they do I do have this battle with various Jules fans and like that think we're going to be eights and nines out of ten every week. But if we're not eights and nines out of ten every week, then we're not playing for Gillingham and Morecambe or League Two. We're probably in the exactly, championship yeah. or at a bottom half Premier League <laughs> team. But such is the beauty of the game. We all see it different, don't we? But yeah, it was like you say, it was it was a really good from Morecambe's perspective, this absolutely it's really good. Brown's still got to pick the right pass. Slew's still got to hold his position and finish off the chance. Um, but obviously, from a, a Jules fan perspective, it, it's not one that we want to watch back too many times. And I'm sure Shadogi won't want to see it again. There was then another half chance for Morecambe Reese, and I think they sort of worked the ball way through the middle of the park really well. I just felt that first half that Mackenzie and Timmy Dieng were too far apart. It almost mm -hmm. felt like at times that Mackenzie was allowed to drop in and make an extra centre-back if we was under the cosh. But then, of course, it meant that there was too much space around Timmy Dieng. You're then relying on George Lapsley to drop in or the wide players to tuck in and make us more compact. And it didn't seem to be working. Um, yeah, they built the play really well. And I think it was Joel Senior, the right-back, who had a positive start on things. Um, I think he had a shot and it got deflected, drifted out for a corner, which we defended really well. Um, and then Disco Dave's first involvement in the game. And uh, Johnny Williams done well for us from left to right. It was probably the first time in the game that he'd managed to get the ball and drive into space because he wasn't being chased by Brown or 
seen it a lot. Joel has alluded to already, and he gives the ball to, to Connor Mahoney, who's who's one on one with Mister Tatonda, and uh, Dave did what Dave did plenty of times when he was in a dual shirt. He said, "You're not going past me, and I'm going to take the yellow card." And absolutely wiped Connor out on the far touch line. Uh, the most obvious of yellow cards that you can imagine. But I, I thought Dave was decent on the day. To be fair, I thought he had a pretty good game. Yeah, I, I want to give him credit. Actually, he was it was one of the players that you sort of it was yeah it was like yeah you know, it was no different to when he played for us. It was just it was an, an expectation expectation performance for him, and you know he does what he does. And I just want to go back to initially um, the, the first goal Morecambe scored, and one of the things I was very impressed with Morecambe, and I think Joe already mentioned it, but actually the Morecambe's transitional play was it was really good, and I think it did force Gillingham to be on the back foot quite a lot. And it was it was just the speed of it and the organisation of that transitional periods when they regained possession in their own half was really solid. And and it's just that everyone knows what they need to do moving forward to get that ball into the dangerous places. And it kind of kept putting him on the back foot quite a lot. I thought in the first half because of that transition play. But yeah, um, but yeah, it's, yeah Dave just trying to get the yellow card. No, uh, no surprises there really. <laughs> at no, all. I think I was talking to Lee from around the grounds in the stadium. And I still remembered the one um, which I think was the Gallington's first game after taking over against Colchester, where he absolutely annihilated John Akindi and put him in the home dugout on Boxing Day of 2022. He loves a tackle, does Dave? He doesn't always time them correctly. But like you say, you know what you're going to get. He plays with his heart on his sleeve and he plays with a smile on his face. Um, good thing from Jill's perspective was, of course, that we, we got ourselves level fairly quickly. And Joel's already mentioned that the keeper doesn't cover himself in glory. Um, it's a decent build-up for Jill's. I mean... We keep it on the halfway line. We go back if we have to. We try and play into the middle of the part where we can. And, and then Shadogi decides, right, let's pick my moment. I'm going to I'm gonna play it into Ollie Hawkins, which we can do. It was probably saying we could do more than Morecambe because their centre forward wasn't a six foot six lump like, like Ollie Hawkins is. It's, it's a different approach. A centre back. Does well. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Apparently. It's doing all right for a centre back. <laughs> he does well to win the first flick on and then Conor Mahoney picks the ball up slows it down which he's good at doing and then releases Ramo Hutton and I think much in the same way that Brown and, and Slew are alert for the, the opener Ollie Hawkins has to be alert to, to make sure that he stands in the right position for anything that does come off the keeper or centre half which he does really well but I don't think we can get away from the fact like, like Joel has already said that you're a former goalkeeper Reese. He's, he's not done too great with it as he's just patted it down into the middle of the penalty area it's the difference between having your hand flat out and your hand in a fist, I think, is the ultimate distinction there. Mm -hmm. You know, if yeah, you put your hand, hand in a fist, it's, the ball is going to have a bit more of a ping on it. And, I mean, it could then ping into Ollie Hawk, it's his knee and go to the top corner. But then, you know, it could it is, hit, his, hit, his, hit his fist and then ping out the 18-yard box and walk and lift to fight on. Um, it's really poor. You slow the pop, you slow the ball down when you when it goes across six yard box when you pat it down and you know it's as soon as it's slowed right down the six yard box it's a lottery it's anyone's game right there and it falls to Hawkins and I tell you what though I know it's what was it six or seven yards out he puts it in the back of the net but I think Walker had a player on the line I wonder if Ollie Hawkins actually nutmegged him when he put it in I don't know but it was it wasn't a, wasn't an easy finish for what it's worth <laughs> I think it might have been back. Stokes on the that. line I can't remember but. But it was definitely a. He had, to, he had to do a little bit of, you know, bit of finesse to try and get the back of the net, and he did well, uh, nonetheless. Like, like we said with Slew, you've still got, you've still got to hit the target, um, and, and that's what he's done. And, and it was quickly one all for, instead of one nil, which was great. I think we then had a. Mayor was then involved in the game again. I think we had a free kick on the right hand side. I think Conor Mahoney's just. I think he's trying to put it into a dangerous area, and it's the wind was swirling any which way all afternoon, um, before, during, and after the game. Um, to be fair to Mary, he does well. He manages to backtrack and flick it over the bar for a corner, which is take the safety option, which maybe he should have done for the leveller. Um, and then there was another yellow card, Joel, for Mr. Brown this time. Um, one of the most blatant dives I've seen in a fair while, to be quite honest. It was, it was, it didn't wasn't good to see from a a football fan's perspective. I, I understand that that players will bend the rules and and push the envelope as much as they can if there's contact, but. For me, he was just trying to con the referee. And I was so pleased to see a referee actually have the the wherewithal to, to get a yellow card out and say, no, you're not doing that. Yeah, no, it seemed like he was uh, maybe taking a slightly heavy-handed approach from the, the George Lapsley playbook of uh, chucking himself on the ground and asking for everything. Because uh, <laughs> I thought... <laughs> but, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Brown, yeah, look, I was at the end of the pitch, but I saw his reaction. He got up. He didn't really complain about the yellow card. And it... Uh, you know, it's from, from where I am, further at the other end, I can't necessarily see if there's contact, but it was a bit of a, 
a little bit of a swan dive, shall we say? We were we were directly in line with it. There's there's no contact at all. Johnny Williams yeah. is the bird that goes crunching into tackles at the best of times. <laughs> I know, but I don't think his body was holed up to it, was it? Uh, no, to be fair, like I say, he's done well to get through the last few games. Hopefully, the, the the injury isn't too serious. But yeah, that was I think that was the first yellow of the game, and then there was um, Jordan Slew came into the four again, and he done really well. Ball got played into his feet on the halfway line. He manages to hold off Hutton and spin him. There's not many people that, that do Ramo Hutton for pace, but Slew escapes really well. And again, it's that wind that we have to talk about because I think he's trying to stand up across to the far post and it nearly catches Glenn Morris out and nearly drifts into the far corner. Um, thankfully, from our point of view, it went out for a goal kick race into that empty stand. But um, I want to ask you, Joel, Charlie Brown had been booked and then there was a couple of offences afterwards. I think he went down. I put down, there was a foul or two and then I've put another easy fall to the ground right in front of where we were. So I just want to get your gents' view on it. Was Charlie Brown starting to walk a bit of a tightrope in terms of potentially picking up a second yellow? Oh, yeah, the second one, the box. Oh, no, that that, that wasn't an easy... He was, trying, he was trying to hit the ball with the ball and sometimes when your momentum's against you, you're twisting your body in a funny direction, you're whacking it with your own foot, you fall over. It didn't appeal or anything. You just got straight back up again. So, like... I saw a lot of Gillian players kicking off for that. But I was like, get a grip. He's not. Sometimes in football, you fall over. Your momentum. Oh, no, I get that quick. entirely. Yeah, you move and quit your momentum. He's off. You can see he's off balance. He's swing, taking a wild swing with his wrong foot. Like, yeah, he's fallen over, but I don't think he's particularly I'm looking not sure for that's the one I was talking about. Oh, I thought there was another one on the touchline, Reese. Oh, on the touchline. Where he went over easy. I'm not on about the one. I totally get what Joel's saying with the penalty. Mm. I mean, this used to be a thing if you look at higher levels. Gareth Bale used to be clipped at pace and people would say he's diving he's not sometimes it can be no foul and no dive I totally get that but that's not the one I'm thinking about there was one mm. definitely near the touchline sort of midway between our goal line and the halfway line where I think he went over fairly easy and there was a couple of niggly little fouls as well um, I think you had, an, the, you had an eye follow perspective so did yeah. you see it can you remember it if I not, can remember it <laughs> I can remember it, but unfortunately with the eye follow camera, it's the other side of the pitch. So it's really hard to see if there's any anything of, of that. However, what's really interesting is if you hear the BBC Kent commentary at the time, and uh it's it was Peter Lloyd who was uh, was was saying, look, I, it looks like he's gone over a bit easy, but that's but the way in which they described it to me was very different to how I described the first one. The first one is as a clear dive, the second okay. one he went over very easy. And maybe that's the difference. You know, and and you can go down very easy, and like you've alluded to, you could also go, yeah, it might be momentum, it might be the, the type of play. But regardless, I think even by doing even 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 without that particular incident, regardless, if you're on a yellow card and you're maybe trying to you've you've set the premise of Calling the referee of your first one, you're already on a tightrope, and you can't. And even if you go down easy, there might be some referees that go, "You're doing it again," even though you might not be intending to. So that's the thing, isn't it? Like Connor, like Connor Masterson the, the other week with his red card at, at Wimbledon. Don't go and pull someone's shirt two seconds yeah. after a caution. So it's something he'll learn. He got away with it, or didn't, depend on which viewpoint you want to look at it. And shortly mm -hmm. after the halftime whistle blew, and I think everyone was able to just sort of relax and breathe because it had been a fairly breathless first half. And I, I think, Joel, it's fair to say it was it was, it was was a good game for the neutral. If you turned up as a non Morecambe or non Gillingham fan, you'll see, I, I get it's very League Two at times because of the nature of League Two and the conditions, but it was proper entertainment, wasn't it? It was two honest teams, like we've already said, that were trying to win the football match. Yeah, I think fair play to both teams. I think both teams handled the wind relatively well. I thought Apart I mean, your keeper... Apart from our keeper, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the that was the downside. But I think uh, I mean it's funny when when it's that windy because like you you're inclined to think the team with the wind has, has got a big advantage, but not really. I thought actually having the wind in the second half for Gillian probably went against them. I thought I thought the fact that it Last just felt like yeah, yeah, actually aside yeah aside from the goal, but it just felt like all all the balls to Hawkins were just getting carried past him and when you when you're a big lad like Hawkins playing up front on your own you need and the point what you're trying to do is you try and take the ball at your chest you're trying to hold it up and you're trying to and you want the ball to drop in front of you for that but mm. obviously when it's going over his head yeah you can win a flick on but if there's nobody running in behind which there often isn't because generally teams don't operate like that as much anymore so like yeah I, I, it was funny but yeah it was a good game of football I thought overall like I thought especially second half you know some of the stuff we did with the ball, the way that Jake Taylor kind of pulled strings a bit, exceptional. It was probably on the level, I'd say, of like different style of football, but I'd probably say it's 
in, in terms of quality, it was probably up there with like when we got promoted. But yeah, just you can't throw away games like that, can you? No, and it's it's something that's unfortunately from your point of view, and we'll talk about that at the end, is it's becoming a bit of a habit, unfortunately. But yeah, I see your point because if you take our level of Reese, going back to what Joel said about the wind, the ball drops and Ollie Hawkins can plant himself to win the flick on, which eventually releases Romeo Hutton, whereas second half, maybe you just feel like you're chasing it all the time and you've never got it under control. I, I always think it's a, one of the weird misconceptions of football from my perspective is that actually having the wind against you is more advantageous than having it behind you. I, I think you have to be more acute with your play if the wind's blowing behind you, but you could be a bit more, you know, a bit more bashful going forward if the wind's facing you. You could put in a solid ball over the top, it hang up, and then it comes a bit more of a lottery. And if you've got Hawkins up there, who's, who's going to win the percentage header, actually it suits our game better to have the wind in our face. Whereas mm. I think if you're maybe a little bit of a, a passing team, actually like Morecambe, I suppose, actually probably the wind behind them probably could uh, give them some you know open edges every now and again because of that wind. But yeah, I, I, I would say more often than not, the wind in your face actually is probably a little bit more advantageous than the wind behind you. I used to play centre-half. I never used to like it blowing in my face. I'm not going to lie. Fair enough. But <laughs> we'll see it differently. And like I say, I'm sure, I'm sure Timmy Dieng was happy there was a tailwind from behind. But we'll get to that in a minute. The second half started, and like we've already mentioned at the top of the show, Joel went into it in a bit of detail, was Morecambe were the better side for the first half of the second half. That's that's clear to say. I'm not going to sit here and pretend otherwise. Um, they had a chance really early on. Um, Timmy Dieng tries to pull back Joel Senior, who's drifted into the middle of the part and has done really well to get around a couple of people. It's good advantage from the ref. There you go, Reese. I've complimented an official again. <laughs> um, Just signpost that in there. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you have to get them in. Diary moments. Um, yeah, and the ball eventually makes its way out to the right-hand side. It's a good ball to the far post. And I think it's Slew again who's escaped. who's held his position wide and then arrives late. And it's a, it's a decent enough header from where he is on the pitch, Joel. He can't do too much more than hit the target. But from our point of view, our goalkeeper was up to everything that came his way second half, thankfully, pretty much, and uh, managed to um, beat it out for a corner. But you, you must have been encouraged, again, obviously shooting towards your fans as well. Everyone likes doing that. And at that point, you must have been feeling fairly positive that you could go on and take something from the football match. Yeah, no, I think, like like you say, the, the, the play was really good, especially at the start of the half. And yeah, with that one, you know, Slew, it's, it's, it's a weird one. He's kind of contorting his body weirdly. And there's only, you know, the ball goes where it goes in that position. And... Fair play, Morris. Look, you play when you're a keeper in that position. I think you play the percentages because there's no way you're actually reacting. And he he's he's popped his arm out, made him you know try and make himself a bit bigger, and it and it's and you know he's done the right thing there, and it's come off his arm. So fair, fair play, it's a good save. And uh, yeah, I just thought it, we were just putting the moves together, leaving it around really nicely. Some of our balls in the box were quite dangerous, and people like you know slowly popping around the back post, peeling off. That, you know, that was good to see and yeah it felt like the goal was coming really and when you have periods of I'd say probably one of our weaknesses in all season actually under Derek as well to be honest is we'd have periods when we were on top of the very much on top in the game but we wouldn't really turn them into as many clear goal scoring chances as you'd probably like to see but I felt what we did really well yesterday is when we had that really particularly dominant period, there, there were clear-cut chances. You know, there's that slew header. Uh, I think there's another one, isn't there? I uh, can't quite remember. And, uh, you know, and then there's the goal eventually as well. So, like, you know... Well, you had a chance shortly after that one. And it, Dave Tatonda, again, he plays a really good ball down the left-hand side. That's it, yeah, back, the, yeah. Yeah, and Garner escapes. And the, it yeah. takes out Hutton and one of the centre-backs, I think. And then... Garner does the right thing, which is get the ball across the six-yard box. I just think what helps us out is, is Brown scuffs it into the floor. If he makes a clean connection, I don't think Morris has got a chance for he's to scramble across and put it out for a corner. But again, it was it was more complaining, some nice stuff, and pretty much taking the elements out of the equation by keeping it on the floor. Because then you yeah. haven't got to worry about how strong the wind or what way it's going. And it's, it's a save that you'd expect Morris to make. But I feel if Brown makes a proper connection, that's in the back of the net. No, you're absolutely right. And I think actually the, the the intent that Morecambe had at the start of the second half, it was just, it kind of felt like a similar story from a dual side. Like, okay, we've gone one all in one all and come out and we didn't really hit the ground running. And it just, it, it just, the goal was only going to go one way, it felt like. And, you know, when you've got your, the Morecambe talk, the shooting towards the home end as well, and you kind of think, okay, this is, we've really, really, we're really going to have to dig in here if we really want to get something from this game. It just felt like that. And that was compounded, obviously, when Morecambe got their, their second goal. <laughs> and 
I thought there was, yeah, I thought it was all going to be very tough afternoon for us, actually. Yeah, because we'd had to make a change just before that chance as well, because Johnny Williams, as, as, mm. as Joel said, had, had taken a whack and, and had to go off, couldn't continue. And this is where I want to firstly give some credit to Stephen Clements, because we've we've mentioned thousands of times, and at the risk of repeating myself again, he could have gone like for like. He could have put Jaden Clark on and gone, stayed with the 4 2 3 1, but he didn't. He bought on Josh Walker, a player that's not been playing great. The only thing I didn't like about it, because I was pleased we were going old school 4 4 2, to quote a famous uh, Mr. Bassett, um, but in slightly more PG terms. <laughs> um, it shunted Jules Lapsley out to the right, out to the left hand side, which he's not comfortable playing there. And I, I don't think he saw the ball at all after he was moved out to the left-hand side. But you couldn't fault Clements and say he wasn't being brave because he'd spoken his pre-match presser about, we've got to play with the handbrake off. We've got to take more chances. We've got to win more football matches. His team selection and his first substitution back that up. And I think just just to, just to extend that, it and it kind of goes back to what I said at the start, you know, we have what they, they, what we call them the cup finals now, isn't it? So, mm. but it, it's it's all or nothing. You know, if we really want to really show ourselves and try and push that playoff, we have, like you say, play of the handbrake off. Let's play a bit more expansive football. We've been much more of a closed uh, football team uh, the, the, earlier in the year. And I think now it's, now's the opportunity. Now's the time, right? Let's, do you know what? Let's throw everything at it. Let's really try to, try to put people right on the back foot. Let's go forward. And I think, you know, credit to Clements for that. You know, he's playing a back four and he's trying to get people at the pitch, trying to play expansive football. And does it leave you exposed at the back? Of course it does. But does it give you more opportunities up top? Of course it does. Hence why the scoreline yesterday, I think. And that kind of, you know, that kind of epitomizes that approach that Clements is going for. And it went our way, obviously, yesterday. And one thing Clements can't legislate for, unfortunately, is a couple of minutes after the substitution is um, Jill's turning into the dog and duck defensively for a couple of minutes when the ball comes into their box. And that's probably, I mean, that's... A little, probably insulting to the dog and duck. To yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we had we should have had a dog and duck trying to clear the ball. Maybe it might have been more <laughs> useful because, unfortunately, Max Eamer, I thought, was very good on the day. He was a threat at both. He was, he was good in both boxes. He was a threat when he went forward. Um, and solid defensively on the whole. As solid as you can be in a game that's finished 3-2, I entirely get that. But he's got to do better with his clearance. It's like, to use a cricket analogy, he's, he's, he's nicked it, hasn't he? And it's not gone anywhere. It's gone to second slip. We then do well to, to block the initial effort. And then, what is Max Clark doing? Like, yeah. just use your right foot. Just swing something at it and put it into touch. But he tries to hook it with the outside of his left foot and scoop it out. Of pl I, I don't know what he's trying to do. I'm at a loss because Max Clark's been really good since getting back into the side at Notts County. But that is a horrible, horrible moment. Uh, and then we're, we're stuck at the back because Brown's overloaded at the back post then, isn't he? And Max Clark does the usual for the player that's made an error. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Where's the linesman? Is he going to help me out? You're not getting helped out there, Max. That's on you, I'm afraid. Now, and Max Clark's experienced enough to know that he's made a mistake. And, mm. you know, you, you're going to have them throughout the season. We've already said that for OG. I mean... Um, it's going to happen. And he's been pretty solid for us, Max Clark, actually. Uh, but so, does would he reflect that and Goris should have done better? Of course, he should be. He will do. And he will know instantly he's made a mistake. You know, even the simplest of let's just put it out for a corner. Like, you know, mm. something, just put it safe. Um, but yeah, he doesn't do that. I think he tries to be too cute and maybe try to create a counter-attack. I think that's what he really wants to do. And it just wasn't the moment for it. And uh, completely got caught in two minds, fluffed his lines, and then obviously, yeah, back of the net. Be more generous than I am. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Try to start a counter attack. Oh dear, I'm not sure. But we'll come back to you, Joel. From your point of view, you must be thinking, right? This win, this run could be over, um, or at least we're going to pick up something because you're two one in front with with twenty odd minutes to play. You've been on top. You're creating the better chances. You pinned us in. Crowds up. I, I think I've written down at that point started to fear it was going to be another one of those days for Jules. So from a shrimp's perspective, you must have started to be really believing and thinking that finally the finishing line's coming into sight with with three points dangling from it as well. Yeah, but it's horrible going ahead because then you've actually got something to hold on to and you get really nervous. And then you have to <laughs> decide whether you stick or twist, don't you? Yeah. Exactly. And I think they... Because uh, I've always... With the, the nature of how things have gone, you've obviously... I've seen a few people think, say, oh, we should have done what to shut down the game. But the reason why we were... I think part of the reason why Jills weren't having as many crosses in the box in the second half is just because we were kind of more dominant as, as a team. And if you take out one of Kumbene or Taylor and you put in somebody a bit more robust like Jan Songo, 
great. Okay, we've got a bit more of that defensive gnarliness. On the flip side, you take you take away one of the players who has the ability on the ball to kind of keep us ticking over in possession, and then from there you just kind of maybe encouraging a bit more pressure to go against you, you know, and it, that that that's where the, that's the conundrum, really, isn't it? You know, do you shut down, but then just encourage loads more shots, and you have to do a lot more defending your crosses, or do you try and keep possession, keep in control of the game, and keep the game in a position where you're not having to constantly, you know, boot balls away from have, have dangerous balls flashed across the face of goal and try and boot it away, you know? So obviously, it feels like we've gone for the initial approach, and I think look. After the after the uh, after we've gone ahead, as kind of you expect, there's a bit of a period of Jill's pressure. I can't remember it turning into any particularly clear cut chances, but it's just one of those where it happens in League Two football. I don't think there are many teams who've got the quality to quite necessarily stop that from happening at all. And yeah, it just felt like we'd. What's frustrating is it felt like we'd ridden that pressure. And then we were growing a bit more back into the game. And then Jill's have had a bit of a break. I've got to say, I'm, I'm not too impressed with how we've organised ourselves when Dieng's picked up the ball. I think Adams is a bit hesitant to go. Taylor, who in fairness, defended fantastically as well as pulling springs on the ball. Maybe he should have been looking to go across to the man that Adams was marking so Adams could feel a bit more free to come and close down Dieng. But yeah, at the end of the day, like he, he's, you know, smacked it from there and fair play he, he's seen he's got time he's thought he's probably thought I've got the wind behind me and I've got and there's a bit and there's a there's a bit of a glare from the sun and you can see the way he's hit it he's not really thought I'm going to curl this top bins he's thought I'm going to hit this Get he's going to lace it with a bit of wobble and just and just let it carry and see where it goes and he's done exactly the right thing in that situation really and it, it's worked out for him, and it, it's frustrating that a we haven't closed him down quicker. We've not reorganised as a midfield, and, and then b obviously just the the, the, the fact that Mayor is maybe he's kind of gone to flip one hand at it, and maybe just with the wind coming at him, he, he just needs to kind of get behind it, make sure his feet are behind it a bit more, and just have that really, you know, just maybe a little bit more behind it rather than just having one hand going for it, where he can just can easily just slip past you, and yeah, frustrating. And I think from there, I don't think we've. Again, I think it was quite open after that point. We, I, I, I think we did lose, start to lose our cool a little bit, and obviously, I think we made probably a few more passing errors. Uh, and yeah, the third goal, we played it back to Mayor. He's he scuffed it. He's clear. It's completely. I, I, I do wonder if because I thought he had time to take a touch. I don't know what, what what you thought from your end, but I thought he probably had time to take a quick little touch. But it feels like he's panicked, probably because that 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 second goal's on his mind, and yeah. It's got it's not it, I can't remember who it went to, but obviously they played it along and then Chris Stokes is trying to get back and it's come off his backside and, and gone in and yeah, frustrating. <laughs> Very frustrating, but it's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, you can't change it, unfortunately. Yeah. And just so back to the leveler from our point of view, Reese, I think also Joel's talking about the setup of Morecambe. I think they can do better when the ball initially drifts out to that far side, because another one that gets caught on the wind. It's, it's meant to be going in the six yard box. It ends up going outside the penalty area. I think that I don't know who it was if he was covering not in the right back area for for Morecambe, but doesn't really jump, which allows Lapsley to win the header back towards Malone, and then they play like a quick one two, and from there it, it does seem very easy. Lapsley's got time to give it square to Dieng. Dieng's got time to have a touch, get his head up, think right. And I, I think what Joel said is correct. You're not trying to pick a top corner there. You're just thinking, I've got the wind behind me, I've got the sun in the keeper's eyes. If I hit the target and it does a little bit. I've got half a chance. And how many times have we said on this 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 show, shoot from outside the box? Because you never know. If you buy enough raffle tickets, you might win a prize. And finally, we did it. Yeah. Um it's it, it, and that's that's the thing. Like I, I do we we struggled testing keepers this season. And what should Dean do that yesterday? Like <laughs> I reckon you give that to him you give it to him nine more times, about five go over the back of the stand. Two end up in the terrace and probably one's up in the Gillingham fans, you know. But it's uh, the one that he pinged yesterday. It just, it, and it is, it, 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 it kind of, yeah, like you've got the sun, you're right, wind behind you. And that, those two factors have to be in play because without those two things, I think Mayor just saves it. I think, well, they, yeah, because it's really... straight down his throat, essentially, isn't it? Exactly, and 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 it's very difficult for the goalkeeper actually to make, uh, to get something on that. I mean, should he get somewhere? Yes, of course he should. But it's just, it probably moves at such a pace. 
And with the sun in your eyes, you can't really react and see it. You see it late and by and and it looks like an it looks like a horrific error. Like he should be saving it. But I will give the goalkeeper a little bit, a tiny bit of sympathy for what it's worth, um, because with those two conditions, that it makes it a little bit more difficult. But it doesn't take away from the fact that he should, he probably should have got something on it. But it also doesn't take away from the fact that Dieng absolutely walloped it, <laughs> and it, and yeah, back of the net. Equalizer. Yeah, I, I, I could have asked for I... one of. He could have asked for one of these. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was sitting next to my mate at the game, and I said to him, "I, I know I'm, I'm going to look on Facebook afterwards, and there's going to be a lot of people going there." Oh, you don't see keepers wearing caps these days. <laughs> they should be wearing them, but yeah, it doesn't maybe, seem to be fashionable anymore, it, does it? But if it helps, it helps surely. Exactly, I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a not it's annoying, isn't it? But uh, I think I, I'm I'm actually a great believer in don't shoot from range, you muppet. You're never going to score. But uh, <laughs> in those in the but in, but in those particular conditions, when the wind's with you, when it opens up nicely, that's because he doesn't follow a team who's averaged less than a goal in a game for three seasons. <laughs> We're just like shoot, shoot from any shoot, just have a shoot. <laughs> just please give me something to go with. But like, but that that's the thing. Like yeah, I I I don't like it. A lot of players do it when they're in crap positions, when they're off balance, when it's on the wrong foot or whatever, and they they do a horrible job. But in that position where it's he's got he's got. A, Ages, absolutely ages on the ball. Wins behind him, something to keep his eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Have a have a wall up, and he's done the right thing. Obviously, this is where <laughs> I thought Jules then started to, to become the better side. And and Joel's correct, I think, in that Morecambe panicked a little bit, and and they became rushed and frenzied in what they were trying to do, which helped us. Um, but we're still at the stage, I think, where a draw is no good. To, I said to you, Joel, didn't I, pre match that a draw would be no good for either side, really. So from that sort, from the playoff perspective, it's the best result for the league. But from a Morgan perspective, of course, you'd have taken a point if offered it at two all, if you'd known what was to come for the last goal. But there was another chance straight after the equaliser. Um, I'm trying to think who it was. Scott Malone. Ball made its way out to him on the left-hand side. And again, credit to our former left-back because he took a lot of, We've always said Dave, Dave Totonda was either a four out of ten or a nine out of ten, wasn't he, Reese? There's there's yeah. not really an in between with Dave. I don't know what what Joel thinks of that, um, having watched him this season. But I didn't realise just how good a piece of defending that was. I'm not sure who it was at the back post. It might have been Andrews, and Dave Totonda does brilliantly to take it off his toe because otherwise, whoever it was for us is literally two yards out and he's just going to tap it home to put us mm. in front. So again, credit to Dave Totonda. It's a brilliant piece of defensive work. Yeah, yeah and, oh, so go on, Joe. No, no, uh, yeah, no, he's it, it, the way he contorts his body sometimes confuses me, uh, and the way he contorted his body then is just kind of he's he's running towards his own goal. He's kind of managed to jump in the air, swivel, and put the ball away, and it, it's it's a bit it's a bit mental, really. But yeah, like you say, he's he's done all right for us two times of the season. He's had a couple of stinkers, uh, but he's, he's, he's league he, two. Yeah, he's league two. That's the thing. Like last game against Salford, the other oh, was it? I'm actually sorry, it's Newport the other week. He had an absolute howler, but it's league two in it. And uh, yeah, he's a uh... no, he's done all right to be fair this season. He's a good player. I think most most of us want to keep him next season. I like to keep him next season. Yeah, Dave said the same on the preview show. They hope he gets his contract extended because I think he's only got a year, didn't he? Or yeah, he got a year. So hopefully we, we keep him because I, I do like him. And fair play, actually going the other way. He's uh, I think shortly after that chance, that one that was flashed across goal, he's. Gotten into the uh, the Gillian box, sold a couple of step overs, and know, <laughs> I've written down. Di- I've written down. Disco Dave gets his dancing shoes on. That's yeah. literally what I've written down. Because <laughs> he sells a couple of step overs and buys a bit of room, just you know, hammers it near post and blend, fair play. You know, keepers stood tall and uh, beating it away. I love his step over. It's like a drunk person trying to step over a cigarette packet, isn't it? <laughs> After yep. about 18 pints. Like, you know it's coming, but you still can't stop it somehow. Somehow you just get mesmerised <laughs> by them legs going like that. It's like a river dance. Absolutely <laughs> love Dave. Got to stop talking about him. Just before that, there was a booking for Jordan Slew. And again, this is my second question about bookings and whether someone should have been dismissed. Him and Ramo Hutton get booked for... It's essentially, it's essentially handbags. I've got no issue with that. They have a bit of a cuddle in front of the dugout. I don't think there's anything malice in it. I think Slew, somewhat comedically, grabs hold of Hutton's shirt and lifts it over his face. And like for a second, you can see <laughs> Hutton like sort of spinning around trying to get escape from his own bit of clothing. They both get booked. I've got no issue with that. You either do both or you do zero. I'll be honest, actually, I, uh, Hutton didn't get booked. 
Oh, did he not? No, and that no. that I I took issue with that because yeah, I agree. It was both of them being silly shenanigans, getting the stupid worked up footballers all trying to I'm you know yeah you know, I'm harder than you, mate. I would just assume that yeah, it was a little yeah. bit of my dad's bigger than yours, wasn't it? But yeah, I my dad's both have been booked. Yeah. But then the question is there because you've just said it, so then maybe now the referees evened it up. Five minutes later, Jordan Slew and Scott Malone are pretty much nose to nose. Scott Malone gets booked. Jordan think... Slew, you can see, walks away quite sheepishly. And Morecambe send a couple of other players to the referee. Why is that one any different? Surely that should be both people booked uh, as well. So is there a case that Jordan Slew should have been sent off? Nah, not at all. That was I, I was quite near to the, the, the second one. It was really cynical from Malone, basically. I, what's happened is the ball's gone out. Got, Jordan Slew's got to take a quick throw in. Malone's just run into him and grabbed him. And look, Slew's annoyed, but he's not... Slew's not instigating. I think... I think the reason why Slew got booked and Hutton didn't get booked in the first one is because I think the referee thought that Slew was more the instigator. Okay. The first so, time. so if he's done both instant on who's instigated it, then okay, fair enough. Yeah, and I don't think Slew's particularly reacted. Yeah, he's had a bit of a bit of a bit of a shout and but Malone's the one I think Malone, it's pretty nasty from him to be honest. I think he's gone in and basically just thought, I've seen this guy's in the yellow and he's got the potential to kick off a bit. I'm gonna grab him when he's uh, stop him taking the quick throw and I'm gonna get under his skin and try and get him sent off. I it was a I thought it was a pretty cynical, nasty ploy and fair play to the ref for not getting kind of buying into it and fair play to Jordan for not nibbling back. Because at, at the end of the day, if Jordan starts like shoving and prop out and then he's gone, back, yeah. then yeah, he could well be gone. But he didn't really he, he just yeah, obviously he started having a bit of a shout at back at Malone and Malone, but Malone was the one who instigated and squared up and stopped him from taking the quick. Fair play, enough, so. you're right in front of it. I'm trying to look sort of down the touchline, and by yeah, the time it all the, happened, yeah, you... there was a lot of people. Both dugouts were up. I, I think Stephen Clements was trying to act as a peacemaker and pull Malone away, but so obviously your angle would have been straight on it. So fair enough. And Reese, I suppose it was difficult <laughs> for you again because you said the camera was over the far side, wasn't it? Yeah, it's over the far side, and you know that you and it just quite it happened after. A, I think it's in the in live. It's quite hard because it happened before. I made a highlight note for, and then I didn't see it all kick off. It all happened so quickly, and so all I see is just Malone and Slew just having a having a, a, a gentleman. Excuse me, it's use the exact word as Peter Lloyd would say. Um, <laughs> but it was um, yeah, Tips and it, two threes. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> all sudden <laughs> blunder or blood and thunder, whatever he says. One of those ones. <laughs> Get your bingo cards ready. No, but you know, and I think. It was quite tricky from really, I can look back and look at it in more detail, of course, but I think live, it, yeah, I think if, like you say, if the referee's taken the approach of consistency of the instigator, then I think ultimately that's probably about right. No, that's fair enough. And that's why I like to ask the question, because obviously, like I say, we were tucked up in that by the corner flag sort of thing, sort of edge of the box. So it's difficult to get a proper view. Um, fair play to the ref, and that's two today. <laughs> There was then a chance, and it was that man Taylor again at the heart of things. And, and this goes back to what Joel said earlier. As well as being good with the football, he was good out of possession. And this is an unbelievable tackle to get back in. There's a ball gets clipped in from a free kick, sort of middle of the pitch. Um, and it's a diag that this time we let the win take and we get it right. And it drops perfectly. And Max Amar, for a centre-half, has an unbelievably good first touch on his chest. chest and for yeah. all the world, it just looks like he's going to whack it in from about two yards. And suddenly Taylor appears from absolutely nowhere to get this block tackling out for a corner. Um, fair play, because at that stage of the game, we're, we're into sort of the final 10, 15 minutes. The people are tired. When, you make, when you're tired, you make tired decisions. But it's unbelievably alert from, from Taylor to get back in to, to make sure that that shot doesn't get off. Because I don't think, regardless of his performance before that, if, if, if Amar makes any type of contact, Mayne's not, Mayor's not saving that. That's going to be in the back of the net and Jill's lead. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it was it was from such low range, and yeah, I, I think that Taylor. It, he, he, I mean, you look at him; he's quite a lanky guy with floppy hair, and and he's good. He, and he's good at football. You don't really expect him to have the uh, that kind of insane drive to leg it across his box and uh, throw himself in front of a, a big gnarly lead two centre back to uh, to block block a potential goal away. But yeah, he, he's done that, and fair play to him. You know, at the end they. He's playing at the base in the field, and we're doing that mainly for his quality on the ball. But I think you know, even at least at any level, you need to show a bit of like defensive grit to be able to justify you being in that position, not just for your footballing ability. And fair play, he's done that. And it's yeah, it was it 
it was more that I think yeah the game opened up after that second goal and we we started to lose control a bit panicked and again you you just see it in those moments and it was great for EK great first touch from uh from, from the centre back as well you know maybe he should play up front instead of Ollie Hawkins. <laughs> Oh, well, Masterson, who was on the bench, he's our joint top scorer still. Yeah, we've got plenty of good defenders at, at both ends of the pitch, but it's nice to see a, a striker, a midfielder, and an attacking midfielder score yesterday. So, uh, another one for the uh, diary entry. Thankfully, Reese, from our point of view, the massive tackle didn't actually mean too much a couple of minutes later because Alfie Mayer continued to uh, play up to his... Um, Surname, unfortunately, for Joel. Joel's point of view and the, the more can faithful, and, and we've already sort of touched on it, Joel, as it's it's a horrible scuffed clearance akin to a, a golf player topping a drive. It's 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 bounced feebly down the fairway. If there's one person you don't want it to land at the feet of, it's Conor Mahoney from a defensive point of view because he has the ability from the edge of the box and he does what we've seen him do so many times. He slows it down, feints to shoot, creates that half a yard, gets it onto his left foot. Again, he buys a lottery ticket. The lottery ticket is the centre half whose knee gets in the way or backside or whatever. And again, we was in the ground after we'd calmed down from going absolutely mental that we're leading with a couple of minutes to play and said, keeper's got to do better. And then it was only afterwards someone on Twitter yeah. said, no, it's taken a nick. Because again, we couldn't see that from our perspective. And yeah, looking at the highlights, he's got absolutely no chance that one there, unfortunately. But it just summed up his day, the clearance, didn't it? It's the, it's the feeble palm out for the opener. It's the ball going through him for the second and a horrible, horrible attempt at a clearance for the for the winner. Um, but, yeah. thank, but thanks. <laughs> but but it, it, it's uh, yeah, you don't want that ball to fall to Conor Mahoney at all. And and he does a lot of those feints and, and and fake shoots that he does and, and puts defenders off balance. But I don't know that one that led up to that third goal yesterday where he, where he feints. I, I just really liked it because it, I don't know who it was he sent, but it was it Taylor. I don't know, but it was just, it was just really he didn't do much to feign him as well. <laughs> he just it, it just he just he just slowed the game down and then just took his own motion forward. And it was and, it, and you know, you say you take a shot, get it on target, anything can happen. I think it stokes it, nicks off in the end actually. And uh, and you know, if it doesn't touch him, it goes straight to Mare, and you know. He should save it if that doesn't I was going to say, yeah, if it doesn't, it's probably <laughs> two all still. But such was the day he was having. We still might have ended up with a winner. But Yeah. Um, but no, it's, you know, th we haven't had much of that this season. That kind of little bit of nick here and there, a little bit of luck. And, you know, scoring three goals in a game is, you know, it's a, it's a you know, it's gold dust at the moment from a Jewish perspective. So it's very nice to to have that a little bit of luck, a defense having a having a poor day, and us taking advantage of it for a change. You know, I, I felt last week we could have scored three against Grimsby, but we didn't. <laughs> they yeah, were we more solid and playing crossbar challenge instead, weren't we? Second half yeah. last week, <laughs> kept winning unfortunately as well. Um, <laughs> Joel, I'm, I'm guessing the the feeling at, at that point was just deflation completely, having been. Generally very good and, and certainly in the game. Like I've said, the, the first half was even. You think you bossed the second. I thought it was a half of two halves. I thought after the level of we were the better side, but you still weren't without a threat. You're always going to have that because of the way that you play the game. But must be like just... Uh, <laughs> like yeah, another think... game where you've made chances, you've scored goals and you've ended up coming out on the wrong side of it. Yeah, and, and at the end of the day, I think... Uh, I think it, it felt like, yeah... You know, sometimes when 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 you're behind and you have a little bit of a late rally, but I didn't feel there was much of a late rally. It felt like the wind had very, very it it been taken a bit out of our sails by the equaliser, and but we still had moments. You know, we Dave Dave Tonda hit a good shot, and there was a couple of other bits as well. We did well. I think we had a couple of shots in the edge of the area that went wide, but yeah, after after that third goal, it just felt like the wind was just completely gone from our sails, and we just didn't look at it. I think everybody's heads dropped a bit, really, and. Yeah, it's frustrating because when you when you play as well as you have we have done for periods of that game, I just think you know and and to, to do so well to be ahead against you know a team who are competing for the playoffs. I know, I mean it's a funny it's a funny landscape the playoffs. I do think, and this is including us in in that picture. If any other anybody other than MK Dons, Wrexham, Stockport, and Mansfield managed to sneak up through the playoffs. Uh, at the expense of one of them, I think they're in trouble next season. I think from what I've seen, Orth, Gillian, Newport, Walsall, Crawley, they're all sides that have merits to them, but I, I can't see any of them 
I'm not in a particularly long time in League One. Next no, season. I suppose then you'd have to look at teams that have potentially maybe got a bit of backing, and I'd have to put us into that. I'm not saying you know that we're in the, the Wrexham and the Stockport levels, but I think, like you say, if anyone below fourth that goes up is going to have to to buy well. Yes, that's a good point. Compete yeah, in League One, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, early in, like you say, Gillian do have a bit of backing now, and so Gillian went up. It was maybe not. As deserving as somebody like MK Don's going into the season, but that at the end of the day, if you if you put the back in in over the summer, and you have a good summer, then yeah, who knows? Still a long way to go till we get yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> so I won't jinx it. I'll stop now. I won't jinx it for you. I keep um, right. I think I must have written down the playoff dates and tipped them out of the calendar about fifteen times since Christmas. <laughs> uh, uh, such is the nature of the division. I, I think Reese Joel sums it up quite well. And we've had this issue before, haven't we? We see the board come up. Or if certainly if we're watching on Twitter and we're not at games, and you see the tweet six minutes injury time, and then you just get booking full time and you think what the hell have we done for six minutes <laughs> and that was luckily what it was there was a booking for Ken Benny and there was a booking for Coleman I think both were correct um, and then a full time whistle went thankfully and uh, we managed to come out on the right side of it and how many times have we said find lines in games and we're in football matches but we somehow find a way to, to let ourselves down it was great again to, to come out on the right side of it after a tricky period as well four games without a win remember before coming into this one which was Stephen Clements' longest winning win I'm getting tired. Stephen Clements' longest winless run. Reese, talk, please. <laughs> that was, I've got to say, for all it's worth, if you're as alert as you could be, that sentence itself is a tongue twister. Oh, uh, the concession. <laughs> give up. But, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you know, to be, to be on a bad run of form and to go to a, a very long trip away. Well, actually, we're doing quite well up in the northwest from what it is. I think we're not doing too bad up, in, up for away oh, games up there. Stockport. We've got to stop. If you're saying Greater Manchester, I know we're loosely including Morecambe in Greater Manchester. <laughs> Stockport, <laughs> Accrington, Salford, Morecambe. Yeah, there's been some. Yeah, we do well in, we do well in our black and white kit as well. I think we've only That's, lost the white. Someone mentioned that, that yesterday, kit, actually. Yeah. I yeah, can only so... recall us losing to Crew and Wimbledon wearing the black and white kit. Yeah. Maybe maybe we should just maybe try that at home. <laughs> oh, do you remember that season a few years ago under Lovell where yellow socks became lucky? So we was wearing black and white. Yeah, you'll love this for a kit combination, Joe. A few years ago, we wore yellow socks for one cup game because there was a kit clash. And so we decided to do it for the next month. So we were wearing black and blue striped shirts, blue shorts and yellow socks. Honestly, <laughs> was the, I'll try and find a photo and I'll send it to you. It was the most horrific combination I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if you caught any of the, uh, the Mansfield game on TV yesterday, but they had... Uh... I think they had the, the kind of usual yellow shirts and uh, and blue shorts, but then they have red socks on. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah, it I'm was really alarming. I'll have to have a look. A couple of the lads had it on in the coach, but I was, um, I'm old, so I was trying to sleep. <laughs> for, for, me, this, for, for me, I think there's only one team that can manage a free colour kit, and that's Brazil. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Fair play, yeah. <laughs> right, anyway, we've got off on a tangent. Um... Reese, I like Morecambe. I, I, I can't say a bad word against them. I've written down, good club, good pies, mm. <laughs> good players, good ethos, and most importantly, lots of good people within that football club. And I think that the season they're having given, and Joel knows more about it, and Dave, who had on the preview, could talk about it for hours, that, that what's going on behind the scenes with the, the club being up for sale and that type of thing, and the fact that, that Derek Adams left a third half of the way through the season. They then lost all their best players that were on loan. They got recalled. They then lost JJ McKeon to injury who's not been seen since New Year's Day. To still be in the mix in the final furlong of the season is, is a phenomenal effort. And I, I've got nothing bad to say against Morecambe. We was really lucky yesterday because I was up there with, with Lee who does around the grounds and he spoke to one of the sort of match liaison officers and, and Joel can vouch for this and they let us two go in and Ava and, and have a little look round, walk along the touch line. Um, so that we could get some footage in there for, for relative match day vlogs and that type of thing. And, and the bloke was really, really helpful. The stewards were really helpful. The only one I think who got any stick was the, the one Joel who, who headed the second ball back into play when we were chasing the winner late in the second half. And I had a little chat with him as I walked out the ground and laughed and said, you're in, been in trouble if that had finished two all. Um, I say, I like them. Your thoughts on Morecambe? I think they're a really good football club. Really good football club, yeah. I mean, it's they're they're always in the sort of League One, League Two landscape, aren't they? And and, and it's a, a solid, solid. I've never been up to Morecambe actually. Um, it used to be called the Globe Arena, I think. Is that it might be its actual name? And then um, if you do was... it, go on a coach that's got all its tyres. 
<laughs> yeah, that might that might help that one. <laughs> but um, for what for what it's worth, actually, a lot of um, I've spoke to a couple of more friends through doing the channel itself, and uh, yeah, always positive, always always great to talk to, uh, and and the fan the fan base is fantastic, and yeah, it's just credit where credit's due great great club up there and uh yeah um it really it's, it's always it's always a pleasure to play against Morecambe genuinely nice club to have in the division absolutely yeah a lot of the people I've encountered like Joel he put, comes in that category Dave who does all the I follow stuff really helpful really knowledgeable Tom who does shrimps online there's James does the Morecambe feed James and Charlie who are, are both at director level are very affable and, and easy to approach and, and get stuff out of um yeah it's just it's just a it just gives the feel of a very good community club Joel, I'll come to you. Um, defensive naivety, perhaps, has ended up costing you yesterday, which is frustrating. You've scored seven goals in four games and ended up with zero points, which must be massively frustrating. It's, it's, it's the other end, isn't it, keeping that shut? If you can sort that out, you know, you're still going to win games between now and the end of the season. But 14 conceded in four tells its own tale, unfortunately, doesn't it? Yeah, it, 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 it's very frustrating. I think... I, I, I'm really interested to see what kind of uh, defender we end up going for in summer because obviously mm. this is Derek Adams' back line that he picked and in fairness we've, we've got quick defenders like Jacob Badoe he's quick and very mobile but uh, I think he's probably going to be off in summer though because he's a very good player and I think he'll, he'll, be, he'll be, be up to higher leagues but I think like you say the de defensive stuff I'm interested to see if we'll want to keep recruiting a bit of gritty gnarliness to kind of drag the defence through those tougher moments. Or if we'll kind of go full out, get a couple of quicker, more nimble, agile defenders and just kind of more lean towards the, the more ball-dominant kind of style and have, have them defenders who can play maybe a bit of a higher line and stuff and kind of have dominance in games in that kind of way. So I, I'm curious to see what, where we're going to go with that. So uh, yeah, just need sorting out. And obviously Archie Mayo, look, he's been... He's a very young lad. He's generally been pretty good. He's a bit shy of his line. Uh, he hasn't. His shot stopping so far has actually been really good. So yeah, Dave was praising him massively on the preview yeah. show. So he's going to have a very good career. So thanks, Dave, for jinxing it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> we'll have to blame him, won't we? But uh, absolutely. Yeah, like, but he did tell us about the pies. So one all. Yeah, no, the pie, the, the pies. They were on particularly good form yesterday as well. Actually, I, so I, I good, yeah. yeah, they were really, they were really on it yesterday. But uh, yeah, I think he'll, he'll have a good career, Archie. But he's he's young and he's going to have days like that sometimes, from time to time. And he still probably is a bit shy coming off his line too overall because you, you get a lot of young keepers who are, aren't don't you? Uh, which again, which leads me to think, why the hell did Burnley pay nineteen million for James Trafford? But that's an, that's a debate for another day. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think we've got Stuart Moore. To come back in maybe at the end of the season, maybe start our next. Maybe hopefully we can keep for next season. So I think it's just a matter of ironing out a couple of little, those little issues, and hopefully we'll be able to kick on. Yeah, fingers crossed you do, because like I say, I like more come a lot. And if we are still in the same division next season, it's a trip I look to make again. Just hopefully get home a bit quicker. <laughs> uh, Reese, before we wrap this up, um, Stephen Clement spoke about making sure that we're still in contention come Easter and then making sure we're still in contention after Easter. Well, that's step one done. We are still in contention as Easter approaches. It's only goal difference that is stopping us from being in the top seven at the moment. We do need Crawley to have a bit of a wobble. I've been frantically looking at their fixtures. I think they've still got to go Stockport and Mansfield, which is um, quite helpful. So we'll be um, becoming County and Stags fans, obviously, for them 90 minutes. But we've got to keep doing what we do and we've got to keep winning football matches and we've got to keep being brave and, and, and doing what we did yesterday. And it wasn't always perfect. And defensively, we are going to be a bit more open. I get that. But we're going to give ourselves a chance if we keep creating and we keep taking chances. And credit to Stephen Clements, like I already said, he was brave with his changes. Um, yeah, he played with the handbrake off, like he promised. I am convinced still, and I stand by it. Will still go down to the, the last game. game of the season, Doncaster at home. I'm convinced about that. I still think it will do. And that seems like an excellent place to end it because that's what we said last week as well. And we'll keep saying it because <laughs> that is the nature of the beast in League Two. Everyone keeps taking points off of everyone. It's a mental, mental league. And to look at it and still see teams down probably to 13th, Harrogate still in with a chance. I know it's getting harder and harder for some teams because games are running out now and time is running out. But yeah, Harrogate are on 54 points. So they're five points off the playoffs with about half a dozen to play. They've only got to win three on the bounce and suddenly they're right back in it. 
Joel, really appreciate you coming on, mate. I know it's never fun to come on and talk about a defeat at length, but I do appreciate your time. You're very knowledgeable. You're a good bloke as well, so thank you very much. And you basically just encompass what Morecambe and Morecambe fans are all about, so I do appreciate your time. As I said, go and give him a follow. I'll put his details in the description. You're all subscribed to Reese's channel. You're all going to go and watch his match day reaction show, which I watched at about 1.30 in the morning because I couldn't sleep on the coach and it was very, very good. And it was great to see Reese getting excited and all the goals going in and it was wonderful. Um, Thank you. I am going to go to bed because I am absolutely knackered. Um, thanks for watching as always. Please keep hitting that subscribe button. Please keep liking and sharing and retweeting and doing all that you do. I did put a post out over the weekend regarding the prize draw. We're going to delay it till the summer so that anyone who does win a shirt from their club shop can obviously get their, tw that wasn't even a word, ugly, can obviously get their 24 25 offering, and I will pay for that and ship to the UK. That is my way of saying thank you for everyone's support on the channel over the last seven and a bit years. Um, hope you've enjoyed this one. I know me and Reese have more than Joel, probably. And yes, thanks as always. Uh, we will see you. Oh, I don't know how we're going to do this because it's a double game weekend, isn't it? I will think of something once I've had some sleep. But until then, up the jewels. <laughs>